Uh, so we have officers from PG County, Prince George's County. I'm sorry, Prince George's County. Um, so Swahili Society America, SSCA. So get used to SSCA in collaboration with the Prince George's Census Complete County Committee present an education seminar. Mr. Elvis Dana from Africa Diaspora Raison, Office of the Prince George's County Executive. Welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you. What a wonderful panel. It was amazing to watch and really learn here about, this, uh, uh, about Swahili Society America as well. So thank you, Dr. Leonard, Dr. N Dr. Nicholas, and also Ms. Neem as well for giving us a wonderful educational you know, seminar today. My name is Elvis Den, of course. I'm the African Diaspora Liaison here at the Office of the County Executive, and it's a pleasure to really represent this community here at large for the county. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of my roles is to really manage the African Diaspora Advisory Board here, uh, and I'm really glad to have someone of Swahili, um, of Swahili culture on that board. I, I'm sure many of you know Mr. Kevin Oyana, He's the, yeah, he's the owner of Swahili Village, so um, he's been doing an instrumental job of letting us know what's going on in the Swahili society. He actually gave, gave us, you know, this connection here as well, so what a great opportunity to continue this collaboration and this relationship as well. Just a little bit about me. My name is, uh, I was born in Liberia, so I'm, I'm actually from West Africa. I came over here when I was three years old with uh, seven brothers and sisters, so... All this right here really just hit home for me, just to continue the culture, right? Continue, just continue the culture. And that's just so important. And the county executive is really interested, like I said, in our diaspora communities and, and really want us to, you know, build that coalition to really help empower each other, educate each other as well. Um, so today, one of the things that we're really going to talk about is the Census 2020. Um, this is a national initiative, you know, and I have one of my colleagues here, Thomas Johnson from the Office of Community Relations here. He will go further on into the presentation as well. But, you know, one of our goals is, you know, make sure the county executive's office and the community at large is aware of what goes on in the African diaspora community. And um, it's very important. It's very, it's very important to be counted. You know, it's very important to have your, your voices heard. It's very important to be a partner with the government, whether it's at the local, state, or federal level. And um, I'm not going to go too much into detail, but I'll let Thomas Johnson come up and then finish the presentation. Hi, everyone. How are you all doing today? Fantastic. So again, my name is Thomas Johnson. Um, I have been out here advocating for the census uh, since, I don't know, maybe July. Um, my job is truly to get out here and make sure that um, everyone in the county gets counted. So I am not um, of Swahili descent, or maybe I do have African in my, I believe we all do as African Americans, but I do believe in family and I brought my five children with me today. Um, yeah. I have three boys and two girls and um, my wife, I am blessed, thank you. And my wife, um, one thing that I, I do is on the weekends, because I work a lot and Elvis knows that, but every moment that I can get, I think one day we had a conversation, the kids and my family, and they were like, I was like, kids, do you know what your dad does? And they were like, yeah, you help people. Or dad, you know, oh yeah, you do this. And I was like, they really don't really know what I do. So just to get them to come out and see it and understand how we engage people and why it's important. And I believe that's important too. Plus I believe giving my wife a break is important as well because yeah. So ladies, you can say amen on that. Amen. There you go. Preach, preacher. Good Lord. We got some serious amens on that one. Good God. Um, do you have that, uh, that, do you have that flash? Did you put it in? Does it? Oh, let's see if it works. It does. All right. Thank you. Awesome. So first of all, I want to thank, uh, Elvis, um, the, um, County Exec's office, um, the our partners because we're all partners this cannot be done by ourselves and you all are partners you all are going to be ambassadors sure. because this is key to make sure that the trusted voices are heard in the county to make sure everyone is counted so again 
The slogan for the county exec is proud to be counted. That is our slogan, as you can see, on, where is it? I think I saw it somewhere. Yeah, Prince George is proud. We're proud to be counted, and even the handouts that you have. Um, with the, the beautiful uh, logo that was created for the African diaspora and our Swahili Society of America, amazing. So we're going to go into why this is important. I like to start on a macro level, and then we'll go to the micro, right? So big, and then we'll get small. So the decennial census, every 10 years, the federal government conducts a population count of everyone in the U.S. Data from the census provides the basis for distributing more than $675 billion in federal funds annually. So that's throughout the United States of America. Now, why is the census important? And this is just a quick snippet sheet, and I'm going to go more into detail um, a little bit later. First of all, everyone counts. Everyone, as in baby, to greater or better than the largest age we can get. Everyone counts, except for animals. You cannot count your dogs, can't count your cats. That's not possible, all right? It's about fair representation. We want to make sure that the people that we vote into different offices represent us. And we also want to make sure that we have the correct amount. We don't want gerrymandering happening. It's in the Constitution. This has been around since 1790. And so that's over 200 years. And if you are a person that believes in the biblical side, then you also know that there was a point when Mary and Joseph had to go and take Jesus to another land to make sure, because the king at that time said he wanted to make sure folks were counted, right? If you look in the Bible too, again, numbers is about counting, calculating. It's about making sure the right people are where they are. Also, your data is confidential. This is something that we need to make sure we tell people. Your information will not be sold or given to ICE to any of those other areas, <laughs> to the Department of Homeland Security, to any of these places that um, right now within the governmental federal structure, there has been things that have occurred to kind of offset people doing what they need to. I, don't, I work for a government, so I'm, I'm speaking around it. You all understand. Okay, and it's about redistricting, and it's about the money that I just spoke about. So why is this census important to me? It affects the amount of funding for, that the community receives. How your community plans for the future. Also, your representation in government, we talked about that. It ensures public services, funding for schools, hospitals, fire departments, and it determines how many seats are in your state that's allocated. Benefits are schools. We know that in the northern part of the county, a lot of our schools are overcrowded. And the reason why they're overcrowded is because we're not receiving the accurate count of really how many youth are living in different spaces. Therefore, when they come to the school, they have to accept them, but we're having 30 plus kids come into a classroom. And then truly the infrastructure of the school cannot take. And then we have teachers that are stressed out because they have all of these youth. It's very important to get the right numbers. Also with benefits like SNAP and WIC, for benefits for our seniors. What about our roads? Do any of you all like potholes? Anybody here? No. Potholes? Yeah, I hate potholes, yep. That money can be used to repair our potholes. It can be used to really make Prince George's County proud, but it's gonna be up to us to be the ambassadors. So when will I complete the census? The next census will take place literally beginning mid-March, next week. Next week, March the 12th. Get ready, because what you're going to start seeing is an envelope mailed to your house that has a code on it that you can complete the census. Now, you ask me a question, Thomas, what if I lose that envelope? Guess what? You can still complete your census. But that envelope is to help keep another level of just yeah, information. And so we want to know in certain spaces, are people filling out their census? 
So the official day of the census is April the 1st, National Census Day. I do not know why it's on April Fool's Day, but <laughs> it is. But don't be a fool, do your census, right? That's just my slogan. Y'all can use it if you want. But between April and June, the U.S. Census Bureau will begin following up with households that haven't responded. That's when you're going to get your enumerators. Those are the folks that come around and knock on your door. They come and say, hey, Mr. Boss, Mr. Boss how are you doing? My name is Thomas Johnson. Um, have you completed your census? Okay, well, sir, I have this form. Maybe I can have a little time. It'll probably take about 10 minutes to complete. Do you mind? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Can we give him a hand clap? He did a good job. He did a good job. So, but the point is, a lot of folks that are living in our county may be illegal immigrants, right? So, do they really want somebody to knock at their door? No. So, for the first time ever, you're able to complete your census online 100%. So you can go onto your telephone on March the 12th and just tap in there your census. You also can do it by the, you can do it by or online, or you can do it online, phone, or you could do it by mail. All right? Now, the one thing about Prince George's County is that you are going to have probably about four to five mailings of the census sent out to you. What I'm saying is this, please don't wait. Please encourage people the sooner the better to complete it because the Census Bureau is smart. They know the people that do and don't. So what they'll do is they'll make a list. So when those enumerators come out, and they're going to start coming out in May, at the end of May, they're going to come knocking on your door. If you've already completed it, you don't have to worry about that. Now, every household can choose to respond, which means if you live in a house and you have four people, I'm going to use me an example. I have seven people in my house. Everybody in that house is counted on that one census form, every single person, not one form per person, okay? Every single person on that form should be counted on that one, and that house should be counted. And it only should take about 10 minutes, and I'm going to tell you why. It's only 10 questions. And they do not ask about questions such as your Social Security number or your bank information or anything that's private. This is information just so that we can make sure we get the accurate count. Does anybody know how much money Prince George's County lost in 2010? What's that? Tell us. We lost $363 million for not completing the census. Now, the sad part about that is it does not go into a bank account, collect interest, and wait for the next time. What happens is, what would you say? It just goes away. No, even worse. It goes to other counties that have done better. Oh. So for those counties that may have received the 98% count, Guess who's getting some of that money? They are. You're laughing, but she said something. Montgomery County. Montgomery County had a 98.6% counting their census, I think, in 2010. They got a lot of people's money. Why do you think they are able to build infrastructure? Now, they have 1.8 million people. We have, I believe it's up here, 909,000 people. Yeah, but guess what? we were undercounted by 75%. So that number's not accurate. That's why it's important. We lost a lot of money. So when the census will, the census will include 10 questions regarding the resident's name, race, telephone number, and other general questions, all right? So when completing the census, you should count everyone in your household living there on April the 1st. So the question we get a lot of times is, what if I have a relative that's visiting and they're in my house on April the 1st? Well, if that's not where they live most of the time and they're just visiting, they're not counted there. Now, if you have a child or you're a grandparent that has custody of your grandchildren, and this is just examples, and that child lives 
or they stay there more at your house than the parents' home, then they're counted at your home if they're there on April the 1st, okay? Now, what information will not be requested? They will never ask for your social security number, never ask for your bank or credit card account number, never ask for money or donations or anything on behalf of a political party. This is important because what's happening this year also? Elections. And so you're going to have people that are coming around knocking on your door. And they want, they may have some nefarious reasons. If you've already completed your census and they're coming up asking you for donations or your social security number or saying, well, you haven't completed your census, Mr. or Ms. So-and-so, then you know they're lying. So just disregard them. Definitely. Because we know with any good thing that comes around, there's always something nefarious that tries to come as well. That's why it's always better. Even in school, they taught us, finish your work early so you don't have to worry about the teacher getting on you later, right? Take care of your census the sooner you can so that you already know that it's done. And then tell your family and friends as well to do it. Now, will my information be kept confidential? And this is serious. I, I like to read the, the number two. Wrongful disclosure is subject to a $250,000 fine or imprisonment for up to five years or both. Okay? So any one of these law enforcement agencies, DHS, ICE, FBI, CIA, or any other law enforcement, and I'm speaking for Prince George's County as well, because they said that they, they would not work with anyone that is trying to get information pertaining to our census, that they will be, they will have really harsh fines. And also at top, Census Bureau employees take a lifelong pledge of confidentiality. Also, data is only collected for statistical purposes that help with federal funding for our community. So it's not to get your information. Now, does anybody pay taxes here? Y'all pay taxes? Yeah. All right. So you know the government has our information. We about to pay some taxes now, right? So if they really want to find out on a granular level about what's going on, they can do it. But the census isn't asking for that. We just want to help to get the money that we need for the county. This is one of the reasons why this is the first time that a county exec has ever been this passionate about making sure that there's money for the county um, in the history of county execs. Now, have any of you all heard of the American Community Survey? Okay, folks have heard about it. So in Prince George's County, there have been a few people that have received this survey. Only about 3.5 to 4 million people received this survey. And what has happened is that folks think that this is the census. So they fill this out and then they say, well, I've already done the census. I don't need to do the census now. The American Community Survey is given out every year to collect information about the United States of America. And so this survey is the original census form that was sent out. This is the one where you put how much money you make, you know, your, uh, all of that personal information, your social security number. This survey also has the citizenship question on there. So people were getting confused. They were saying, well, I'm not gonna do my census because the president said they were gonna do this and here's this form. That's not the form. The census form is, comes out every 10 years, right? So this is what we need to know. If you have heard or somebody has received this, you fill out the community survey form, but also complete your census form. Um, it's very, very important because it gives us data and it helps government run very well, but making sure that that census is filled out in March the 12th is key. So this is what I'll talk a little bit about why our efforts need to be different than previous years. In 2010, census household population count was 844,000 people and change. We had a 2.3% undercount of Prince George's County population. That's 2.3. Estimated 19,900, not people, but households were counted. 
um, were not counted in the census. So if you think about households, how many people were in there, then that's more like 400,000 people. Prior outreach efforts in 2010 were completed census by paper form only, TV or newspaper ads or radio, but now we're everywhere. Next week you're going to see bus ads, you're going to see Metro, you're hearing it on the radio. I was at Planet Fitness this morning and I saw it up on the screen. They were like, U.S. Census, make sure you complete your census. So social media, um, Twitter and Facebook and all types of things. So we're getting the messaging out. Now, these are our challenges, and these are things that you all need to really help us with. The citizenship question. It's not on the census, this one coming up. Please let people know that it's not. Also, access to internet. This is another challenge we have, but New Carrollton Library is gonna be one of our census hubs. If you have a church or a business or a place where a lot of people go, that you can be a census hub, a place where people feel safe to come and complete their census, please be it. We're signing up, you can let Elvis know, but we're signing up folks as hubs. Um, we're doing events called Census Sundays or Census Sabbath, where some people have churches where they meet on Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday night. We're telling churches to open their doors and after service, allow people to come in and complete their census, and then they can leave with something to say, I'm proud to be counted, right? We're just trying to really think outside the box. Our schools also are hard to reach population where our children under the age of five. For some reason, that population was being missed in 2010. Our senior citizens were being missed as well. Homeless population and non-English speaking population one thing about our schools, and this is a good thing, our schools are census hubs as well. So there's gonna be a number of schools that will be open where folks can come and complete their census. Um, now, can anyone come up with any other challenges you think that may be for this census? Any ideas? I like to kind of have interaction. <laughs> any? Okay, all right. Go ahead, Elvis. I can. So if you rent out your basement, and that's a good one, if you rent out your basement, everyone in that household should be counted. Everyone that's there. So say, I don't know, and I use this as an example. Um, back in the 60s, my father, well, maybe 50s, maybe 50s, 60s. My father was from North Carolina, right? But he didn't want to stay in North Carolina and work in the tobacco fields. So what he ended up doing was coming to Maryland to live with a cousin in their home, right? He helped pay for some rent. He lived there. He was able to kind of get himself established, and then now he's having his own home. There's community members that are helping out family members, right? They're working and helping out. For this census, our job is to help, and anybody in that household Every single person for that census needs to be counted. So say me and Elvis were right here, right? He's staying with me. He's a friend of mine. It's okay. On the census form, it will say, who is that person? It may even be a different last name. It's okay. Just count everyone that's in the home. Again, your information will not be shared with anyone. And the goal is statistical purposes. And I think that's what we're going to have to break that myth, that thought that, well, if somebody finds out they're staying in my home, will something happen? And so that's one of the challenges as well. Thanks for bringing that up, Elvis. And, uh, and I have one more. What go, if, go, go. Uh, what if you have a child in school or, or something like that and you're yep. worried about them maybe getting double counted? Mm -hmm. that as well? Cool, man. So colleges and universities, we have a complete count committee that deals with that but I'm gonna answer that question specifically. Say there's a child that's from the state of Maryland, but they go to school in, I don't know, Florida. I'll just use that as an example, because I like warm weather and I was hoping it gets warm pretty soon. If that child is in college on April the 1st in Florida, then they'll be counted in Florida. That's where they will be counted. But say if the parent says, well, you know what, just in case I wanna count my child at here in Maryland, what will happen is the system is so smart, 
and it asks its own intuitive questions to where where the parent counted them, it will X that out and they'll only be counted in Florida. Now, this is the cool thing about this. If now say there are other families that are doing the same thing. They live in Florida, but the child goes to the University of Maryland or Bowie State, right? They will be counted, if they're here on April the 1st, they'll be counted in Maryland. And the reason being is because they're using our facilities, they're driving on our roads, you know, they're using a lot of what's here for the county. And it offsets. So we're not gonna lose anything. Matter of fact, we'll be just even with it. So I hope I answered that. Okay. So this is um, hard to count areas. Um, on this website, Prince George's County, Maryland National Capital Park and Planning website, there's information where you can find out if your space is a hard to count area. And honestly, New Carrollton is a hard to count area. Ironically, Prince George's County is probably close to 49 percent hard to count yeah if you look at some of the information when you go on here you can see in those spaces you'll see like a Langley Parks College Park you know why College Park is hard to count because a lot of the college students in 2010 didn't do their census right so you also have areas too like that are right around the beltway that area, do you know the, the area that is the hardest to count, and I thought it would be Langley Park? It's Capitol Heights, Suitland, Oxon Hill. It's, it's, it's interesting, but that's what's, and in this area as well. We have a large immigrant population that is just not being counted as much. All right, so this is the American Fact Finder website. This number, came from the population count of 2018, and this was from the American Community Survey. Now the census showed that we had 844,000 people, but the American Community Survey showed that we have 909,000. Numbers are a little different. The census really, really mattered, right? It does matter, because there's money behind that for us. So, how can we get involved? Now, you all know that there are jobs that are offered for the census. Yes. I'm going to go. If you would like to join the Prince George's County census team, then their jobs start not at $21 an hour. Flexible hours, paid weekly in training. And what you have to do is go on to 2020census.gov slash jobs to apply. Okay? We'll make that information available to you. Now, they're looking for supervisors, and they're looking for field canvassers. These are our enumerators. Prince George's County, they have a complete count committee, a couple of uh, complete count committee, but with 13 subcommittees. The one, the 13th, uh, is the, our county government, like our agencies. Also, another way that you can help is to become a census ambassador. We're not asking you to patent Charlie. We're not asking you to get out on the street. But what we are asking you to is to tell people about the census and why it's important. And if you are in our ambassadors to do that, I believe that if one person tells five people, then we can tell everybody in Prince George's County. And we can really make a difference. You can help make partnerships, just like Elvis did with uh, Swahili Village. And he's hosting, you're hosting events there. Yep. So if you know people that will want to just talk and be advocates or ambassadors for the census, point them that way. Also, so this is it's really small, but these are the different committees that we have in Prince George's County. So we have a faith-based subcommittee. We have an education subcommittee, universities and colleges. We have one focused on our senior population. Um, we have international immigrant one subcommittee if you're interested in that see my man right here group quarters which consist of like the bases hospitals jails parks and libraries subcommittee nonprofits and community based we also have our business municipalities um, the homeless and the media subcommittee so if there are any of those that you're interested in to give in value or if that's your background and you love doing work like that to help us get counted please let us know we want to get you plugged in 
Yes, ma'am. Um, for Prince George's County, I don't see a reason why, because the goal is to get everybody counted. Like the census wants to make sure they get a great count as well. And we would love, I mean, we have, matter of fact, we have some retired census folks that are helping us. So yeah, that'd be great. So census outreach, talking points. It's easy, it's important, and it's safe. It's easy because you can do it on the phone, online, or by mail. It's important because federal funding for everyday necessities for the county. And it's safe because data cannot be shared by law. So these are some events that are taking place, some volunteer activities. If y'all want to hop in and be a part, I'm ready. Let's get it. So we got 311 Day of Action. On 311 Day of Action, that's next week. My God, that's four days away. So we're going to be all throughout the county from 7 to 7. I know if y'all have jobs, don't even think about it. <laughs> don't think about it. Don't call off. It's all good. Just spread the word. We're going to be all throughout the county telling people about the census. This is the Office of Community Relations. This is also the County Exec's Office and any other partners. Maryland National Capital Park and Planning will be a part as well. March canvassing on 324 in District 7. We're going to have a huge block party in District 7 on the 28th, but we're gonna do canvassing efforts there. That's like our Suitland um, area where we could really use some feet. There's a lot of homes over there and we just wanna go knock on doors, talk to people, get them excited. Now, the block party is free. You all come out. There's gonna be a free basketball um, clinic for youth ages, I believe six to 15. And then there's going to be a free video game tournament as well. There's also going to be Lego Robotics and STEAM and STEM. There's going to be free food. This is going to be a good time. And that's going to be from 10, I believe, till 2. And this event is going to take place at the Suitland Community Center, which is attached to Samuel P. Massey Elementary School. So if you are able to make it out, the first two are volunteer opportunities. The last one is just come out and support. Just be a part, get some free stuff, you know, have fun. So this is my contact information. If you have any questions or any concerns, or if you have an organization that would like to take part or be a census hub, then reach out to me. Um, I can make myself available. I believe I have some cards too. And that's all I have to add. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we are all out here in a ton of WhatsApp groups. So ways to really engage our communities is what we're looking for. Okay. So if you have any short clips that talk about the census yeah. and why it's important. And then, you know, we share funny videos, but this is very critical. Mm -hmm. Showing information such as, you know, $18,000 is what, you know, your participation is worth in Prince George's County. That would be great. And you know, if you also have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. a ton of us are on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can share that information. Nice. Okay. So I can, I'll let him go, but then I can go. Right. Go ahead. Come so on. We do have a Facebook page of Prince George's PD after we die. So we'll update some, you know, county executive events and stuff like that. So and you guys can email me and I'll do a follow up as far as um, giving you guys access to that information. And another thing, I know you spoke about media. So if any of you guys are interested in, you know, want to cultivate a video that we could really produce and, you know, share, please let me know. All right. So I want to, and I'm thankful that you brought that up. So we do have a website. It's called pgcensus2020.org. If there's any information that you would like, or I believe we're working on something right now. Also, the U.S. Census Bureau has a website where they have videos, short videos, where it talks about, like, the faith base, the international population, how to reach out to them. 
I can share that with you as well. Now, this is something cool. If you like media, we're about to have a Take 10 and Take the Census event that's taking place on March the 25th. For everyone in Prince George's County who wants to take part in that, this is, it came from the county executive's office, but literally we're going to be leading every entity. We want to make sure every uh, place in the county, every business, every agency completes their census on the same day. It would be kind of cool. So what we're going to do is do video. We want to, if there's somebody in your community that you believe is an advocate and we can have them like in a real a quick snippet video to say why it's important to tell people to complete their census, then share them with Elvis and we can get them on our video. And we're looking to have 100% participation amongst our agencies and our businesses in Prince George's County. So I want to make sure that happens. Our schools are down with it too, um, the jails, um, the leaders in the jail, not the jail folks in there. <laughs> You know, I just have to put that out there. Um, but again, are there any more questions? Any more? Well, awesome. Thank you for allowing me to come and speak to you. Um, it was a pleasure. And thank you. Uh-huh.